Indie I be, ain't an obscure rapper out there who be indier than me. He's so indie. Indie and how, come not near to me for I'll be indier than thou. He's so indie. Indie indeed, if I were on an indie label you could call me mainstream. Welcome to Indie Cred, where I take a moment to spotlight some of the more interesting games that have come out from independent developers that I'm just now playing. Yes, I know these aren't exactly new, but they're new to me, and I don't want this channel to die. First up, Action Hank. You know how Sonic the Hedgehog, 16-bit Genesis Sonic, not Sonic Adventure Sonic, or Sonic Boom Sonic, or Sonic and the Dark Brotherhood Colors All-Star Racing Sonic, had one thing over Mario back in the day, arguably. Back before they were sports friends and more when they were competitors. The thing he had was speed. Sure, Mario had a bit of a ramp up and skidding movement that gave him feeling of momentum too, but Sonic had the speed. The only thing that ever bugged me about Sonic games is that they never really incorporated any flow into their level design. You would always come to a screeching halt. You ran into an enemy, or you hit a ramp the wrong way, something would stop you. Every Sonic game only has two good levels, and those are Green Hill Zone 1 1 and 1 2. Action Hank is a Sonic game that keeps the flow intact throughout the whole experience. It's a speed-oriented platformer where you play as a child's action figure running an obstacle course made up of building blocks, Legos, Hot Wheel tracks, and jet turbines, for some reason. One of the things that really sticks out to me is the game's visual style. Everything about it reminds you of playing with G.I. Joes and other action figures as a kid. From the way the characters click and clack when they run, to the goofy way the characters flop around on some of the jumps, to the fact that the floor is actually lava when you get right next to it. The soundtrack is pretty cool too. Chiptune tracks that bring back memories of things like Contra and other action platformers from the NES and Super NES. But the crowning jewel of this game is the level design. The levels are constructed in such a way that you can always keep your speed up. That's because, unlike Sonic, it's more about getting a high score and beating the part-time than beating all the enemies and the boss at the end of the level. It's got integrated leaderboards that allow you to challenge friends and people all over the world, which is always a must-have in games like this. They also have a really good level building tool to keep replay value high and tons of user-made content. My only problem is only kind of a personal nitpick. The Rainbow Medals. This game ranks you on your speed and time of completion. You can get bronze, silver, and gold, obviously. Rainbow is their equivalent of platinum. They are too goddamn hard. I'm not good at these games by any means, but oh my god, they are way too fucking hard. Even with all that in mind, I'd still absolutely recommend the game if you're in for quick games and short bursts, or something that'll slightly distract you between larger expenditures. Especially for $10, it's totally worth it. It would also make a great addition to the 3DS, Vita, or mobile marketplace. Next up is Distance. You know what kind of games I usually don't like? Sports games. And realistic racing games. They both generally fall into that same game every year with a couple of minor gameplay tweaks category. Now pay us $60, please. I usually try to avoid games like that like the plague. The only racing game that I'll usually go up to bat for is Burnout, and that's only because I can get as many points for crashing as I can as competently racing. Now, I might have another title to add to that list. Distance is kind of like Tron meets Trackmania meets Burnout with a little bit of brutal difficulty to level everything out. You race along crazy cyberpunk worlds filled with insane looping tracks. It has broken roadways that give way to aerial racing segments, crazy amounts of stuff blowing up, it's really really cool. The game is actually beautiful. I really like the Tron-inspired visuals. Everything in this game looks like what Hollywood thinks the inside of a computer program would look like in a combination hacking and racing scene from some Fast and Furious movie I'm sure is in development. The soundtrack is wubby as hell because that's all cyberpunk soundtracks are allowed to be anymore is dubstep. But if you're into it, it's not that bad. A little on the repetitive side for my tastes, but not bad. Uh, one of the coolest things in the game, though, are the traps and obstacles that are in each map. Throughout the levels, there are obstacles like lasers, saw blades, and grinders that come out and will try to wreck you. Now, in most games, crashing into one of these would be an instant restart to checkpoint. But in distance, the damage to your vehicle is persistent between checkpoints. So if you come right out of the gate and get sawed in half, you can still try to race as half of a car. It's a minor touch that I really liked. Uh, another small addition that separates Distance from some of its brethren is its transformation mechanic. Every car can also become a jet, uh, much like vehicles in games like Mario Kart 7 or Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing Transformed. But with those games, the transforming is all contextual. You have to drive through the flight checkpoint to become a plane. You have to hit the water to become a boat. 
In distance, tap X twice on the controller and bam, you're now a jet plane car thing. And if you want to go back to being a car car, just tap X twice again. Naturally, there are a couple of levels that take that ability away from you, like ground challenges and whatnot, but it's a small touch that I felt worked really well and I really liked it. At time of writing, the game's still in early access, but that doesn't mean that it's starved for content by any means. It's got most of its adventure mode implemented, and the level creation tools are there so you can play user-created content. It also has multiplayer modes that allow you to play online with friends in custom games or match-made racing playlists. The only gripe I have, and it's less than a gripe than it is a warning, is if you get motion sickness easily, this game is not going to be for you. When jumping from angle to angle on some of the crazier maps, you'll be flipping perspective quite frequently, and it can be disorienting at times. Again, this is one that I can safely recommend if you want a new racing game, or maybe just a new type of racing game to add to your library. It's $20 as of right now, and I think that's a pretty good deal. You should totally buy it and support these guys, they're doing good work. Hey, I just want to say thank you so much for sticking all the way through this video. I know it's a, a crap ton shorter than the other one, but that was the point. Um, so I know that it wasn't an, an incredibly critical or harsh review, but hey, I lucked out. Both of the games that I chose were actually kind of fun. Uh, it, it would be awesome if you decided to like this video and hopefully share it with a bunch of people so that I can get tons and tons of opinions. If there's a specific game you want to see me talk about in the future, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or uh, contact me somehow, stalk me on Facebook, I don't care, whatever. Uh, but yeah, if, uh, if this gets a positive enough response, I'll try and do more in the future and uh, maybe we'll get some really, really shitty games that I can get super angry about again. That would be cool, yeah. Uh, subscribing would also be awesome, because then, uh, more people will know that I exist. So, yeah. Uh, so if you also want to see another video that I've done that's a crap ton longer, uh, you can click, uh, somewhere inside of this video box. I will have another video box playing a smaller video box of a previous video box that I've video boxed. And you can watch that and give that more views, too. That would be awesome.